Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to use ANSYS Fluent to solve a steady state turbulent flow over a 3D car. So this is the first, let's say, 3D complex geometry case we're going to look at. So open up Workbench. As before, drag across the Fluent workflow. And I'm going to call this, um, say, uh, steady state car. Okay, and we can do it on 3D over here. And just double click on geometry to open up a space claim as before. And as always, this geometry could be prepared in, in another CAD software, yeah, but we'll use space claim here because it's the default one. So I'll wait for that to open up. Okay, so once space claim opens up, in this case, we're, we're not gonna sketch the geometry, we're just gonna import it. So and define uh, the, uh, the geometry available on Brightspace. And um, so it's gonna be the same car that we're going to use for open form later on. So it's a little toy car. It's actually not a, a, a life size car. It's actually like a little matchbox uh, car. So we go to assembly and file here. So we're gonna load in the part. So I have it on my desktop. Um, so by default, it's looking for a space claim um, file. So you just scroll down and go all files, or in this case, it's an SDL. So SDL or all files. So it's called action cars, name and file action car SDL. So SDL is the same format that was uh, is used for 3D printing. It was actually invented for 3D printing. So it's a, a faceted CAD format. And um, so it's basically a bunch of triangles. Uh, describing geometry. So uh, it's still used for 3D printing, but it's commonly used for describing complex uh, geometry as well in CAD. And so when we load that in, um, it's going to be in this orientation. And um, just because the default orientation in Fluent is, is different, I'm just going to rotate it around here, but we don't have to do this. It's just for convenience uh, for viewing. So I'm just going to grab one of these little arms here and start dragging. Um, and I want to bring it to 270. In fact, while I'm holding on left click, I can just type 270 and press enter. And then I might point it in the next direction as well. So I'll grab this little blue one here. And then while holding on this left click held, try 90 and enter. And that's that's fine where it is. So that's our uh, car. So there's wheels as well. We won't bother putting in the wheels here. Uh, they are needed if you want to get a correct lift and drag profile on the car and um, but will be 90 percent of the way there um, and it's it's a lot of the the meshing challenges will be to do with the small gaps between the wheels and the road and the wheels and the car itself so we're going to leave those out and um, but you can be sure that car companies are including those and they're including the rotation speed of the, the wheels as well okay so how do we uh, create a geometry for this so we want to simulate the car on the road um, so either the car is stationary when blowing at it or the car actually driving. Um, so this is the external flow. So um, the where we're going to model the fluid and we have to create that domain. So we basically have to create a, a giant box around the car um, of a certain size. And that's where the, uh, we're going to model the, the wind flowing because we're not modeling the, the flow of the air inside the car, it's the, around the car. So to do that, we can either sketch on a plane, a rectangle and extrude it to make a box. Uh, but there is, if you go to this prepare tab, uh, there are some tools for these air external aerodynamics problems. Uh, so there's something called an enclosure where we can make an enclosure around our car. And there's a bunch of other tools here under repair and prepare and to do with getting it a bad edges and faces. So this is a nice, clean, simple CAD geometry, but often CAD geometries will have very small faces and small features, and you can get rid of a lot of those. Uh, using the different uh, tools here. Uh, but we don't need them there. So click enclosure, uh, select our car here. And um, in fact, before we do that, I'm just going to cancel and I'm going to convert this to a solid. So I'm just going to click on the facets here, right click and convert uh, to solid with merge faces. And um, okay, so I'll just change this color. So now I'm going to go back to enclosure, click on enclosure, select the solid. And so you can see it has put distance. If I go back to design and spin here and rotate it around, you can see there's three distances, the distance from front to the, basically the distances to each surface of the block. And um, so 
and if we go back to here, um, if there's some options here for this enclosure, so there's symmetric dimensions, so we're going to turn that off. So it adds extra dimensions. So typically the distance from the front of the car to the front of the domain isn't the same as from the back of the car to the back of the domain. So if you want to see the full wake of the car, you might have a larger uh, region behind the car. Um, Typically, you need a relatively large box, as in maybe five times or even 10 times the length of the car in the front and behind and above to get results that are independent of the walls. So you don't want these walls affecting the flow. There needs to be a large domain. Uh, but just for um, uh, quicker calculation times and demonstration, I'll just make that a smaller box. But if you were trying to get the true value, you'd have to do a domain study where you maybe would simulate three boxes of increasing size and see that it is big enough. Um, so if I uh, start with the first dimension, I'll just use 30 millimeters. Um, so I can either click another one, or if I press tab on the keyboard, it'll jump to one. So behind, I'll put 100 mils, I'll put 30 at the side, uh, tab again, I'll put maybe 60 at the front. These are kind of made up numbers. Um, I'll put 30 on top. Um, and uh, underneath, we want the car to be almost touching the road. So I might just put five millimeters. Um, and uh, just be careful, this, this car here is in millimeters. So it's like a 60 millimeter car, it's like a little toy car. Um, and then we'll put 30 on, on this side. So let's just uh, uh, scroll around and see what that looks like. So you can kind of see that we have a gap underneath the car. It probably will be closer, and if you have the wheels, the wheels will be touching, but I just don't want the, the, the challenge of getting small uh, cells in there and having challenges making a, a nice mesh. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll leave it like that. So that looks fine when we're done with that. Um, I just click tick, and then we will have our domain. Very good. Um, so there's our domain. So we're going to be modeling the fluid flow in this block. Uh, with the car removed from it, basically. So that car would be a wall that air flows around. So if we were doing a transient analysis like a DES or LES, um, uh, turbulence modeling, um, that turbulence is 3D by nature. So even though it's a symmetric case, you'll get the turbulence vortices flicking to the left and to the right and all over the place. So you couldn't use a symmetry blend in that case. But we're just going to do a steady state RANS simulation. So uh, RANS uh, takes the time average of all this turbulence. So the time average of turbulence in a symmetric case will be symmetric as well. So we don't need to model all of the car, we can just model half of it. So we're just going to cut this domain in half um, and remove the material we don't want. So that will make our model run at least twice as fast, probably a little bit faster. So just on the left here, just make the enclosure disappear. Just going to zoom in, you can see this mesh is kind of symmetric. Um, so I will go to design and here, a little origin. I'm just going to stick an origin on top of the car, maybe just there. And then I'm going to make a plane. So if I click plane here to create a new plane, and then just select the uh, Z. So click on the Z, so we have a new plane just come right down the center. So if I turn on the enclosure again, you can see there's a plane down the center. So if I go to split body now, split body will let us uh, remove the part that we don't want. So let me just check which side I'm going to get rid of. Uh, so the global domain here will keep the positive Z, uh, basically. So we get rid of everything over here. So go back, click split body. So I'm going to click this block. And we just change the angle. It looks a little weird, that angle. So I'll select that block. Then next, I have to select the cutting plane. So just select this cutting plane here. So now it has cut it, and now it's asking me, do I want to remove part of it? So yeah, I'm going to click here, and that's going to get rid of it. OK, so I'll just do the same with the car as well. So I will select the body again, select the body of the car, select the cutting plane, let's cut it, click here, get rid of it. Very good. So now we have done that. We can get rid of the plane and the origin, just turn them off. We don't need them anymore. So in fact, we can actually turn off the action car uh, body as well. So now this is our domain, this enclosure with the car cut out of it is our domain. Uh, so now we just need to make some name selections. So if we go groups, so this will let us uh, like define where the inlet is and the outlet are. So if we 
you know, after rotation and just select, select it, click the inlet, go over, create NS, create main selection, call it inlet, a center. And let's do the side next. So click the side, create main selection, just call it side. Oh, type. And I'll just hide both of those. So I'll hide the inlet, right click, hide, right click. Um, okay, it's actually did it hit the other one? So right click hide that one. Good. So it's hitting all those. So now I have the outlet, right click that. Um or left click on it, select it, then click name selection and call it outlet, enter, and you can hide that one as well. Um hit the ground. Right name selection and I didn't like that. So click and hide all of those. So we um, now have the symmetry plane. So I'll left click on that. I'll create name selection symmetry. Press enter. Click again, hide it. And now we're just going to look in the Z direction. And just click off symmetry, zoom in. Now I'm just gonna select all of this car. So if I just start in the bottom left and then select over it. So if you start in the bottom left or bottom right, it will have different selection uh, capabilities. So depending on if you half cover something, it'll either select all of it or part of it, depending on, on whether you go from the top right or the bottom left. So we just want to select everything. So just make a box around everything. Go we'll create an inspection, and this will be our car. And um, so that is everything there. So if we right click here and go show all, it just brings everything back for us. Spin around and go back to the structure, turn off the action car. And that was just the original model we loaded in, but we've cut that out of this enclosure. So actually, if you right click on action car, uh, we're going to click suppress for physics. So there's actually two domains here. There's the enclosure domain where the car has been cut out of, and then there's the car on its own. So we don't want to mesh inside both of them. We don't want to mesh inside the car. So we don't need this action car anymore. So if you right click and suppress for physics, now it's giving me the option to activate it again, then uh, that will be ignored when we go to the meshing step. So we're pretty much good to go now. Um, if you were really interested in getting a nice uh, mesh, you might, um, or an efficient mesh, you might make a, a block around the car or a couple of layers of blocks where you can later on in the mesh or specify smaller cells or smaller cells in the wake. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, this is fine. So let me just turn off the plane and the origin. Yep, everything's fine. So let's just close out of the place claim now and then we can go into the mesh. Great, so I'll just double click on the workbench measure and we'll wait for that to open. Um, at the end of this video, I can just quickly show you, but uh, Fluent with Fluent Meshing, uh, Fluent actually has its own measure independently of the, this workbench measure. Um, and it's relatively fine to use as well. It has some different options uh, to do with making polyhedral mesh, uh, particularly suitable for cars like this. And um, so you could try making it in workbench and you could also uh, drag out a Fluent measure to set up the case using the Fluent measure if you wanted, uh, but you don't have to do that. So I'm just gonna pause it while I wait the typical 30 seconds for this to actually load the geometry. Okay, it's loaded the geometry now. Um, let me just move my little head out of the way. You can click on the rotation tool, rotate around. So you can see, here's this image plane, you can see our car is cut out. Uh, so the car itself is quite a low resolution STL. You can see there's like large triangles. Um, so it doesn't really make sense to have a very fine mesh on this case because the geometry already has a lot of error in it, just the way it, it has been discretized. Uh, so if you're using a, a real car or a vehicle you really are in, interested in, you probably would start with a better quality CAD, but this is fine for, for demonstration. So we could just mesh the default, just click go and see what it looks like. Um, but I'm just gonna reduce the cell size. So um, I'm gonna set it to maybe three millimeters. Um, click update to see what it looks like. So this is the default meshing algorithm uh, to create the mesh. So you see down here, 
it's going to make the mesh. So the default algorithm uh, for a 3D geometry you can see is uh, tetrahedral mesh, uh, which is fine. And often, and as you'll see when it goes to open foam, we'll use another type of mesh, mesh and approach called a Cartesian based mesh, mesh and approach. So we'll try that here as well. And um, so if we go and uh, method, so click method, it adds a method here, it says select the body. So I'll just select the whole thing, click over here, click apply. And then instead of the automatic method, you'll see we have a bunch of methods you can try them out. And um, what Cartesian is the one we're going to look at. And we're going to leave the default um, setting. And uh, some other options here we can ignore. And we'll click update again. So Cartesian meshing, the way it works, um, and in open form, there's a tool called Snappy Hex Mesh and CF Mesh, which use Cartesian meshing, it basically makes a background grid and then it cuts and the geometry out of it. So if you see here, you can, oh, I'm selecting something. Yeah, I want on the rotation tool. So you can see there's a background mesh, so you get this perfect orthogonal mesh, and then it cuts the car out of it, and then it does some snapping at the surface. So the disadvantage is you get kind of weird cells at the surface of what you're interested in. So in this case, we're probably interested in the drag and coefficient of drag on the car. So you probably get the largest mesh errors right at the surface, which isn't great. And um, but this is okay for now. So let's just check how many cells we have. So if you go over to file and model summary, if you click on model summary, you can see we have 27,000 nodes, 24,000 nodes. So I think for the student version, I think it's 100,000. So that's fine. You could make it a bit finer, um, but it's okay for now. Um, it is possible as well, uh, to, to overcome this issue with Cartesian based meshing is uh, they often add layers or even with tetrahedral uh, cells, they'll add uh, layers. And so layers of cells on the surface of the car or whatever you're interested in to capture the boundary layer. Uh, so that in um, ANSYS, they call inflation. And um, so if we click on the mesh here, um, there's options to do with inflation here. So you can select a surface here if you set it to select this specific patch. So you can uh, pick a patch and uh, then you can say grow five layers or something like that um, on the, the surface. Um, so you can play with that, but it's a little bit, um, it's not, it can be difficult to get it to grow uh, large numbers of layers without giving you errors. So you may have to kind of trial and error, play with it to get it to work. So I'm not going to do it here. So everything is fine here. The mesh is quite coarse, but it's fine for demonstration. So I'm going to close out of the uh, measure and ready to go to Fluent now. So I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to turn on double position. Um, so you may like to check the effect of double precision, but um, it's, there's enough errors to discretization and iteration errors to, to be worrying about without having to worry about round off errors as well. Um, so it can, for even simple cases, affect the results significantly. So it's better, better that we ignore it. Okay, so in this case, we have a 3D model over here. Um, so it looks different because in the past, we've only had the 2D models. So I can click rotate here and I'll have a look at it. So you can see that it's doing some, trying to do some fancy rendering as well. So that's fine. So we've our inlet or outlet and everything else. So we have no option here, it just knows it's 3D. So it's steady state, pressure based. Check, check the scale, it's in millimeters, that's uh, fine. Or it's, it's in meters, but essentially it's like a small car. You can check, everything's happy. And let's go down to the left as we've always done. Let's cut the models. Um, the turbulence model, we're gonna do RANS. So instead of K epsilon, we'll actually just use K omega. Um, uh, SST. So this is it's probably the, the go-to standard in academia and industry that if you're not too sure what turbulence model to use for RANS, this is on average probably the best in most cases. So K omega SST is actually a combination of K epsilon and K omega. Uh, so close to the walls, K omega does better and away from the walls, K epsilon does better. So it kind of flicks between the two of them. So that's uh, fine. Any other settings there, it's fine. So I'll just leave that and check our fluid. So we have our 
cell zone and let's check the materials. I think it's air that's fine. So we will just check that everything's fine here. And so our enclosure is what our internal domain was called. Set the air, that's fine. And we can rename it if we wanted. Let's go to boundary conditions next. Double click, brings them up here. So we could do this a few different ways. We could have a moving car. So actually setting the car to a wall, uh, but the wall is moving. So it's a, a moving wall. So you give it a speed basically. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it a little bit simpler, just not to mess with your, uh, with your mess with the idea of a moving reference frame, which might confuse you. So I'm just going to simulate a car sitting in a wind tunnel. So a stationary car and then the wind's going in. But if you did want to simulate the car driving, you'd have to have the ground uh, stationary, but the car moving relative to the ground and the inlet velocity will be zero in that, in that case. And so we're just going to have a wind tunnel uh, test case. So the car is stationary wall, no slip, just a uh, standard wall. So then for the um, sides and the uh, top, wherever we have the top, uh, did we forget to call the top? Is that the top? This may be the top. I maybe forgot to give a name to the top. Um, so we could specify those as no slip because let's imagine we have a very large wind tunnel and we don't want to model, model all of it. Um, but let's just imagine this is the true wind tunnel. So we'll say no slip, stationary walls, and all of those. Uh, symmetry will get set to a symmetry condition. That's fine. Uh, side is a wall in this case. And um, if it was like you're on the road, then you might set the top and the side to be a no slip or a, sorry, a slip wall. So just keep in the flow, but don't slow down the flow. And um, our inlet, I'll double click on or click edit there. Um, I'm going to set the velocity coming in to be about, um, say, 100 kilometers per hour. So 100 kilometers. So um, 5,000, so that's uh, 100,000 meters per hour, divided by 60 is meters per minute, divided by 60 is uh, meters per second. So you see it's about 30 meters per second. So let's just set it to 30 meters per second. So 30 meters per second is basically 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, turbulence intensity of 5%. Um, probably that's okay, it depends on maybe the wind tone, you might want that to be a lower number um, or design it to be a lower number, but we'll, we'll leave that, that's fine. Um, okay, let's keep going. Reference values, if we did want to calculate the coefficient of drag and lift, you would have to calculate what the, the projected area of the car is from the perspective of the flow, and you'd have to put that in there and update the numbers, but we're not going to do that now. Solution method, we'll leave it the, the default coupled on, um, and we'll leave the default uh, discretization settings. Um, the residuals will leave them the same, so we're going to initialize the flow. Um, so we'll use the hybrid method. So it does 10 iterations to initialize it. Um, then we're ready to run the calculation. So run calculation and number of iterations. So I'm just going to do maybe five iterations to begin with. Um, because I'm not sure how long they'll take. OK, they're pretty quick. So it's finished them. So the nice thing in Fluent is if I don't reinitialize the solution, then it's, it's currently storing the latest solution. So if I just click Calculate now, it'll just restart and do another five. Uh, so if you reinitialize it, it resets the fields. But if you're not reinitializing, you can just tell it to go five after five after five. But I'll set it to 50 now because I know they're relatively quick and get it uh, to keep going. Um, so it's going to continue on. So if we look in this case, this is a 3D RAN simulation. So navier stokes equations, we have momentum and continuity equation. So there are four scalar unknowns. So at the continuity residual, and then we have the three uh, momentum components. So X, Y, and Z uh, residuals. So there's the four unknowns are basically pressure and X velocity, Y velocity, Z velocity. And then when we use k omega or k epsilon, there's an additional two equations that are solved to do with the turbulence. So the convergence was really smooth here. I guess we, we have a nice mesh and it's not too difficult. And then you can see it was waiting until this, the highest residual gets down to 1e to the minus 3. Once again, you maybe you should check if 1e to the minus 3 is good enough for your case. So this was quick, probably would make sense to, to continue this on uh, to lower. 
So you can check that in, in our monitors. So you can go residuals. You can see they're all one minus three here. And you can see you can turn off the check conversions if you want. So like we could force this one minus four. And I know that it will be higher than the other one. So I don't need to set those ones down, but we could set them all lower. So I click OK and go back to run calculation. And click continue. OK. And then we pick up where it stopped. And now I've set the tolerance for this to be lower. So it's going to keep going. And so I'll just let that get down. And then I just uh, will quickly look at the results. So if we go graphics, double click, and double click on contours. So now when it's a 3D model, uh, it's a bit more challenging to look at the results because you just have an outside box. So you have to cut planes through it or, or look at uh, some other features. So let's begin with, let's look at the car and the ground. So look at the car and the ground and we'll look at the pressure on them and click display. Um, so I click my little rotate button over here. So you can see we have high pressure at the front of the car and then some low pressure in certain regions in the car and low pressure underneath the car as well. Uh, one thing here is you can see this, it's only half the car, the only model half it. But um, like in Abacus, you can uh, mirror the results just to see the full results, which kind of makes more sense if you're showing with this one. So you can do that on the view tab at the top and options and not options, reviews. Yeah, here. So mirror planes, if you click mirror planes, it knows symmetry is a mirror plane. Just click that, it goes one out of one, click apply, and there you go. Um, so you can see now that's our full car and uh, high pressure, low pressure readings. So very good. And what do we want to look at next? Maybe some path lines. So let's go path lines um, from the inlet. We let out some particles colored by, um, say, velocity um, and save and display them. So we can't see too much at the moment. So we're probably too many. So if you have a path skip, this skips every, say, five paths to get rid of you. So maybe you can go 10, even more. And then you can play, and uh, you can play with the uh, like the line thickness and, and, and things like that if you wanted to make it look uh, nicer as well. Okay, can't really see too much there, but you, you get the idea, you can play with it. And um, the last thing we might be interested in is to do with um, maybe uh, looking at cut planes through the flow. So if we go contours, uh, and we're going to make a new surface, and that's going to be a plane, and it will be in the XZ. We maybe cut it that way. We can cut it uh, multiple ways, but let's say the XZ plane. Um, and we can drag this up and down, maybe put it maybe at window height of the car. The create close. So now we have the plane seven up here. So we can display the pressure uh, on that, or we can display the velocity. So you can see, actually, that's probably better for, for seeing the wake. So maybe I should make a plane. Actually, if I plot on the symmetry plane as well, and you can probably see a little bit better what's happening. So the velocity is coming in, and then you're getting a, like a, a wake behind it. Also, you can see we have a really coarse mesh, so the boundary layer is really poorly captured here. So this simulation will give a pretty poor estimate of, of the drag on the car. Um, but you can you can uh, see uh, like the domain flow structures. Um, great. So I'm going to close out of Fluent now. If you wanted, you can open it up in CFD Post. And uh, it has some extra maybe tools for, for visualizing in 3D so you can maybe show path lines and cut planes at the same time. I'm not going to do that now. And um, also, as mentioning, if you dragged across Fluent with Fluent Meshing, put it over here. Um, and you take the geometry we already created with the bending box. And if you just click on it and then hold Shift and then drag left click across over here, then it will pass the geometry here into the Fluent Mesher. Uh, so if you were to open up the fluent measure, I'm not going to go through it now, um, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So it's, it's just a different meshing software. Um, but it's not too different. You'll see that uh, you should be getting experience now with different meshing softwares. You should be able to, you know what you're looking for in terms of there must be some way to specify the element size. There must be some way to generate the mesh or set the type of meshing methods. 
and it's the same idea, but actually, in fact, that it's kind of a wizard based system, so it's even easier. So you just start on the top left and follow down. So you click import geometry, it automatically is ready to read the geometry. So you can just go import geometry and it'll start uh, to read the geometry files uh, from Workbench. And then you just go down to add local sizing, that's like seed sizing, and then you just keep going all the way down until you get to find volume mesh and some of the things you can skip. And so, as I said, it has some extra meshing options like polyhedral cells. Um, but I'm going to stop it, uh, the video there.